So I started this farm basically here in Southside um, because I personally uh, had a hard time finding organic produce in this area and that bothered me and so I just wanted to do something about it and initially I was just growing things in containers and pots um, all in the backyard and then it kind of just grew into this micro farm. Um, from, you know, from seeing that there was a need in this community and in this area. We like to really put focus on empowerment of residents, on the fact that the people closest to the problem are the closest to the solution. We used to be the farmers, and a hundred years later, it's like we're not anymore. I mean, it's black farmers are down to, I think, maybe 1%. The problem is just a lot of intentional, systemic, racism um, and oppression that has happened up until this point. Um, a lot of things that transpired around the 50s. Um, a lot of our ancestors moved away from the, you know, from farm life and from plantations um, to the cities to find better opportunities. Um, there were a lot of laws that were put into place that snatched home ownership, land, jobs basically from a lot of marginalized groups, specifically black people and people of color within the city. Especially when Jim Crow laws happened, um, you know, they were unable to still farm and make a living. Um, you know, so there's been a lot of reasons that black people have lost, I feel, a connection to the land and to the earth. And I want to help, you know, return, you know, some of our people to the work that comes so naturally to us. And through the Richmond Food Justice Alliance as well, um, next year we'll be hopefully doing some programming in MLK, as well as some of the other maybe middle and elementary schools in the city. Um, so we have the MLK Restorative Justice Farm that we're setting up. That's gonna be one um, of, I believe, nine other uh, school farms that we're gonna be starting up within the next month or so. Um, this is again within the Food Justice Corridor. The overarching vision to you know, use urban agriculture as a community engagement tool so that we can again access the information. So the Food Justice Corridor is like an overarching uh, project with like 30 plus organizations um, all dealing with, um, they all have their different, you know, lanes basically of what they focus on. We have people who are within housing, people who are within social work, we're within community engagement, we have, you know, farmers, uh, churches, uh, but it's all towards um, creating a different and local food system uh, and then we do have a focus on empowering residents. We don't have to depend on certain services and programs that have not been, um, they've been more a band-aid. So, um, so yeah, they brought me in as kind of like a consultant on the urban agriculture side to help them uh, learn more about how to grow and um, we go through the whole process from seed to, to finish and harvest. We plant seeds, I tell them, talk to them about soil and the importance of soil and soil health and how to build uh, your soil. We aren't doing just raised beds, we will be growing like in the ground and turning over those beds pretty often. I try to farm high volume farming where I plant and sow seeds and then I'm turning over the bed within 30 days once I harvest the crops. So you have to have at least a quarter of an acre because you do need a substantial piece of land to be able to uh, plant enough to earn you that income. But basically you focus on leafy greens because leafy greens and microgreens grow pretty quickly. You can plant and harvest within 30 to 40 days. The microgreens is, is even less, um, seven to 10, sometimes 14 days for those and then you're turning those over and re and seeds. So you're just constantly succession planting so that you always have production. As I got into this process, just becoming more aware of the need that really was there. A lot of people in this community have to take the bus. Obviously you can't carry a ton of groceries home. You may only be able to carry a few things. So you're gonna get what's accessible to you. Like it was something that I was completely unaware of until I moved into this community. Um, you know, I grew up in the county, so we always had access to a grocery store that has fresh produce. And for me, it also became about connecting with my food personally um, to teach myself and my son to have a better connection 
with where our food comes from. Um, I have struggled with some health issues in the past myself, um, directly related to my diet. That was really what created the awareness for me that this is really an issue, that people really don't have access to food. So it was personal as well as, you know, as I got into this process, just becoming more aware of the need that really was there in the community. I just took that leap of faith. I started, you know, planning and um, looking at my retirement savings. And I just say, you know what, forget it. I'm gonna go for it.